friends, how are you doing today? And welcome to another event on my channel. This is the Horror Movie Collection Shelf 3, Volume 1. No, sh Shelf 3, Part 1. That's what I'm going to call it. Shelf, shelf 3, Part 1. I told you it was coming. This this one is a lot of randomness, a lot of confusion, a lot of... It's going to be... I'm going to try to shoot through them because these videos take forever to edit but i'm gonna try to explain a little bit about the movies as i'm going through them like i normally do a lot of people have been telling me oh i, lo I love these videos all these videos because there's a lot of movies that you have i've never seen and i gotta go out and get them because you may you either make them sound good or i, I forgot about them or whatever so I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying please hit that subscribe button if you like what you see hit the like button and it helps with my algorithm my algorithm that, that thing my kids tell me I need to work on me, my algorithm, my algo, algo, supposedly if you like and subscribe, the algorithm helps you to accumulate more subscribers and eBay helps you out, e eBay, YouTube helps, what, hey, I buy too much stuff on, e YouTube helps you out, so hit the subscribe button and let's begin with my horror collection, shelf three, part one, okay, here we go. First, let's start with, this is my The Omen collection. Yes, it's Damien The Omen, all in a Scream Factory box set with all of the movies individually packaged the way a box set should be. And uh, what do I know about The Omen? It's about, uh, he's the devil child. There's a devil child out there. He's He's uh, making you do things, and then and then the rest of the franchise gets really political, and I get really confused, and I don't really care. Is that I, I, you, Omen fans? I'm sure you're gonna be like, "Oh, you know, it's it's a classic. I love the Omen. I love the first Omen. The second Omen too is 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 good. Okay, uh, and then the, you go to the third. Is it third or fourth? Am I going here? Because this one also gives you the remake. Okay, which the remake, uh, but uh, but um, the remake's not not much for me to talk about. That's that's bottom line. It's not very memorable rememberable and not much for me to talk about and like i always say if i can't remember it that well then it could not have been that great i gotta move this stuff that's why i'm kind of hunching over here anyway so i can put the stuff on the shelf over there so the omen collection first first one on the shelf then we have drag me to hell this is a screen factory release i absolutely love this movie i can't I have nothing bad to say about this movie people have complained about the cgi people complained about the special effects Listen, it's a new movie. It's a it was a it was a well thought out movie, well thought out plan. I thought the 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 gypsy woman or whatever it is the the one with the coin. I thought she was she was creepy enough to to make me be bothered. You know what I mean? It, this was a good movie. My uh, this is a movie I can watch with my kids. This is a movie I can watch with my wife. I don't feel uncomfortable. Good stuff. So, drag me to hell. Next one on the shelf. Then we have Thirteen Ghosts, another classic. Scream Factory gave this a beautiful, beautiful repair or 4K transfer or whatever. And the special features are a killer, you know, just like Scream Factory always does. 13 Ghosts, great movie. Uh, it's about this family. The wife dies in a fire and the family moves into this all glass house, which has no no big surprise here. Ghosts in the basement. They're being contained with these containment spells in the basement. And they go in the house and the door locks and things change. And the, the ghosts come out of the basement and they're out to kill everybody. Great, great movie. 13 Ghosts. The People Under the Stairs. Another great Scream Factory release. Uh, great, great movie. Horror comedy. I'm calling this one horror comedy because it's about this couple... Okay, I, I believe they're brother and sister, but they're a little freaky things going on there. And they're abducting children to find the find to try to find the find. To try to find the perfect child. A child that sees, hears, and speaks no evil. But the ones that are all messed up and hear, speak, and see evil, they throw down in the basement and they feed them people and turn them into cannibalistic zombie type, no sun getting people that that just want to eat you. Okay? But they're not really bad people are just poor kids locked in the basement and there's a real cool one that gets uh out of the basement and he's running around in the walls and his name is um okay this the, the little the, it's fool okay but it's not fool it's uh roach his name's roach and he kind of makes this movie worthwhile because he just it's kind of funny you don't talk because the, the he spoke evil and, and mama cut his tongue out and now he's running around the walls trying to help the kids that get sucked in there out of the house 
Great, great movie. Scream Fraction did a great job. The People Under the Stairs. Then we have... Oh, going backwards here. I'm going to go this way. The Strangers. Another Scream Factory release. I um, enjoyed this movie, but I was not too big on this movie. Okay, so Strangers 1. Not a super fan. It was okay. Not, not as memorable as this one. The Strangers... How do, what do you call this one? Pray at the Night. Pray pray at the Night? Pray at the Night, yes. This one was really good. I think it was because of the soundtrack. In the story, I mean, this 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 one over here was a home invasion movie. This one was kind of like a home invasion movie, but they were more like running around outside and stuff. I enjoyed this one a lot more. I think it was the music. They had a, a, so, the song by Air Supply on this, and it's like they, they, got, they try to kill you to the songs of Air Supply. Nothing better than that. Uh, this one kept going too. This one kept you moving, kept you go so so this one I I would recommend and, and you don't have to watch it, this isn't like you're gonna watch this one and then this one you it has to be in an order. No, it doesn't have to be in an order. If you can find a copy of this one, watch this one first. You're gonna absolutely love it. Then you're gonna put this one in, you're gonna be like, wow, that's dry compared to this. I mean, this one is pow in your face. Kids running around. They're trying to kill them. They're in cars. They're going from house to house. It's like an abandoned trailer park. There's a lot of action going on in this one. This one in a house, very slow at the beginning, very slow in between. You know they're going to get in eventually, and then by the time they get in, you don't really care that much. But this one, they're, they're out to get you. Run! You got to run! Yes, regular teens running because you shouldn't have been there, and you better run. Good movie. Anyway, uh, Strangers franchise. Next on the shelf there. Okay. Bubba Hotep. Bubba Hotep. Yes. This is a movie starring Bruce Campbell and Ozzie Davis. Ozzie Davis, uh, of course, from uh, Do the Right Thing. Yes. And this 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 was actually... Okay. I, I watched this back in the day. This is a Screen Facts release. Watched it back in the day. And I was like, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's it's an, uh, an Elvis guy. And, and I, I didn't get it. Put it again. Tried to watch it again. Still didn't get it. I, I, I mean, <laughs> and I, I, I bought it because of the Screen Facts release. But Bubba Hotep is not my go-to movie. I, I just, if it's your your big fan, comment below why I'm not clicking with this movie. I don't know why I'm not clicking with it. It's a uh, uh, Screen Factory gave it a lot of bonus features. Gave it a lot of stuff. I like Bruce Campbell. I like him in Evil Dead. Sometimes Bruce Campbell. Bounces out of the spot. Except unless when he's like a, a usher or whatever on Spider Man, then it's like, wow, that's Bruce Campbell. I don't know. This this one was just a confusing watch. I mean, I don't know. Is, is he a zombie Elvis? I, I I can't even remember at this point. But anyway, Bubba Hotep on the shelf. Invasion of the Body Snatches. This this movie actually this was one of those movies that my father would force me to watch when I was little. And I did not get it. I did not get it. I didn't understand. He, he would make me watch a lot of nudity in this, you know, so I was young, a lot of nudity, and I was very confused why he's making me watch this movie, but it was supposed to be interesting to me, it was supposed to be interesting to him, he was interested in it, he was excited to watch it, this is another one that used to be constantly on Cinemax or Showtime, and he would put it on every single time, it was on, like, hey, you gotta watch your Vision of Body Snatches, it's on, you're gonna love it, I didn't get it when I was little, I didn't get it, but I'll tell you right now, I put it in as an adult, I get the concept now, people are, uh, are taking your bodies, and they're, 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 they're they're walking the earth, and, and you don't know who is the the alien, who's not the alien. This was really good. I I, I had to re-watch it to see if I would enjoy it. But yeah, it, it was really, really good. I, 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 um, I really enjoyed it. So Invasion of the Body Snatches, another one on Shelf 3, Part 1. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Funhouse, great uh, Screen Factory release also. And this is a... Um, it was it was a, a really good movie. I, I um, it's an '80s style horror movie, and you just put it in and you just move this stuff out of the way and enjoy it. I mean, uh, it's about a fun house. Who doesn't love horror movies that are set in like malls, uh, circuses, uh, fun houses? You know what I mean? And that's what this is. So, fun house. Okay, Prince of Darkness. Prince of Darkness, it's another Screen Factory release. I'm, I, this is this shelf is a lot of Screen Factory stuff. Um, Prince of Darkness, I only watched once. I put it on at night one time. I must have been half asleep. I can't remember most of it. So um, it does star Donald Pleasance, 
I don't know who else is in this thing. And if I look at the back, it's not going to tell me. But it is a John Carpenter. It's another reason why I bought it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Not, not much to say about Prince of Darkness. The Car. Yeah, this this is a cool movie. This this is another one of those. Is the seventies, eighties? Are they gonna give me this thing right off the bat? Am I gonna one of these things where I look at it and I don't get the date or whatever? Wait a minute. Nineteen seventy seven. Yes, the car. Nineteen seventy seven. There we go. This is a almost like a pre Christine type movie. Uh, the car is from hell, being driven by the devil. You know, it's 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 out to kill people. What's so cool about this movie is the concept is great. The story is great. The characters are great it keeps you on edge throughout the whole thing the beginning scene is this guy playing i think he's playing a a, a, a tuba or a, he's playing something in front of a, uh one of those squirrels yeah. anyway uh he's playing the thing in the front and the car comes and tries to kill him it's a great opening scene and then the rest of the movie is this car trying to kill everybody you know grown-ups kids everything but if you go on a in a graveyard you know a hollow ground um it can't go into the hollow ground, so they, they kind of keep up it. So it has that, like, dawn of the, like, they're stuck in an area. You know, a night of living there, they're stuck somewhere. And they know that they can stay there and be safe as long as they're in a church or in the hollow ground of, of the cemetery or whatever. And the, the devil car can't come and get them. This was a really good movie. I, I had no idea what it was. And um, I, I, um, wow. Oh, my eye, my eye. Okay, it's the devil. The devil did that. Um. It's yeah, it's 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 good. It's 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 not a Christine. It's it's a uh, rated. What's it's rated? It's rated PG, so you can watch this with your kids. Um, I wouldn't expect young kids because they're not going to get it. You know what I mean? But you know, teenage kids would would enjoy this. This is uh, it, it was really good. I mean, I I put it on and I've watched this numerous times since I bought it. So you got to know it's good if I watched it a number of times and it's a movie that I've never seen before. But Devil Car killing people, I'm all over that. All right, this is a two-pack. I don't know if you would consider this uh, sci-fi or whatever, but it's also, it's in my horror section. You got on the Scream Factory. And this is The Dungeon Master and The Eliminators. I've watched both of these. These are B, just terrible special effects movies. But the stories are, this is one of those put on a Friday night, Saturday night, watches okay you can watch either one on a friday night saturday night don't think too much about it i believe dungeon dungeon master has um is it martin mole but the guy that played bull in night court and he's like the main villain in the thing well and it's just they're, they're, they're almost laughable these are these are just almost like laughable silly stupid b movies that you could tell that the <laughs> they found pots from like probably junkyards and just super glued them down to these people and that's what they're wearing is so that double pack was it's worth a watch on a friday night like i said then we have you're gonna kill me for this pumpkin head okay we have pumpkin head and pumpkin head is still sealed i have not watched pumpkin head yet so i cannot tell you anything about pumpkin head but if i should go out and watch pumpkin head please comment below comment anyway you got some comments to say comment i enjoy it but pumpkin head i have not opened yet scream factory release I know nothing about it. And then we can follow it up with another sealed Pumpkinhead 2. If you haven't watched the Pumpkinhead franchise, why'd you buy both of them? Why'd you buy Part 2 if you already bought Part 1? You, you haven't watched Part 1? Because. Because I can. That's why. Because, because they're Scream Factory. Because they're the horror movies. Because I, I try to get everything I can that's horror. And eventually I'm going to watch Pumpkinhead. And I'm going to be like, I need to see Pumpkinhead 2. Uh, I, I hear that a... Um, Soleil Moonfry, which is Punky Brewster, is actually in Pumpkinhead 2. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing Pumpkinhead 2 more than I'm looking forward to seeing Pumpkinhead 1. But I will eventually watch the Pumpkinhead franchise, and I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about it. If I love it, don't love it, enjoy it. If you guys are fans, tell me. Hey, watch Pumpkinhead, my friend. All right, next one here is Deadly Blessings. This is another one that I have not watched yet. Screen fact release, a lot of bonus stuff, audio commentaries, interviews, Scream Factory does a great job, and this was when I was on my kick of getting anything and everything Scream Factory. So I was like, "Deadly Blessings, what's it about?" I have no idea, but I but I wanted to grab everything, so they were cheap at the time. That I had a I had a run where I was finding Scream Factory uh, Blu-rays for like ten dollars a piece, and I was like, I 
I put on lowest search on eBay. I just grabbed every single Scream Factory release that I possibly could on Blu-ray. And this was one of the titles, Deadly Blessings. I should watch it. I think there's a like a big star in this thing. I want to say, if I remember correctly, I, I um, it's got a girl from Battlestar Galactica. Oh, Sharon Stone's in this. Sharon Stone from uh, Basic Instinct. That's what the big star, whatever. Anyway, Deadly Blessings. Still have to watch it. The Fog. Another Scream Fact release. Love this movie. This was a great, great movie. This is one of those Saturday afternoon, rainy day movies. The Fog. What a... This was a great movie. Okay, The Fog's rolling in. It's bringing in this... Uh, pirate ship from of the dead that are uh, coming back because the town did something to aggravate the the pirate ship people and and they're coming back from the dead to come get them. i think it had to do with something like uh it wasn't a medallion that was stolen or it was something to do with a plank the kid ends up getting like a piece of the boat and it's a piece of the boat that that was demolished and disappeared but for some reason he ended up getting it they're, they're back because it's so many years later and they're re re revenging, re avenging their deaths and everything. Great movie, The Fog. And that's this. It's another John Carpenter movie. Um, Dog Soldiers. Dog Soldiers. Yes, I watched this. What do I got to say about it? It's very dark. You know, I, I want it. I have been in a search for a another good. Okay, let's, this this is my my question for you. I enjoy werewolf movies okay werewolf movies i, I want to see a good good werewolf movie now when i think of a werewolf movie i think of the best werewolf movie my absolute favorite hands down i have actually favorite probably favorite horror movie because i have watched this movie hundreds literally hundreds of times and i absolutely love it silver bullet silver bullet starring cory fame cory fame wow cory hame cory hame and um Wow, Gary Busey, who and the little girl from uh, uh, Anna Green Gables, love, love, love that movie. I love the concept. I love the action. I love the the werewolf. I I love the the Corey Haim character, the sister and brother relationship. I, I love the the friend character, the the the, the priest character. It, it's to me probably one of the most perfect. Uh, movies except the except the the werewolf is not scary at all. But what a great ride! That that I love that movie. I I literally will put that in if I if I cannot think. Sometimes I sit in front of my wall of movies. I'm like, what should I watch? And I cannot think of what to watch. And I'm like, I want to watch a horror movie. I just grab Silver Bullet. It's it's, it's a go to movie. I will sit there from beginning to end. I will enjoy it. I will watch it. I have no complaints about that movie. It is awesome. I am looking for another movie like Silver Bullet in a werewolf format. Now, did I find another one? American Werewolf from London. Close two together yeah they got something interesting going on this is dog soldiers i put this on one night i it was dark it was dark werewolf movie uh some people say howling i have the howling in there too i don't know if howling is going to be it today it's going to be in a, a, another collection or whatever but the howling was another one they have plenty of sequels on the howling but it still did not sell to me the, the concept, the feeling, of like like Silver Bullet did, the, the feeling of the werewolf, the the I'm I'm immersed in these characters. I love these characters. I don't want to see them die, and I want to, I want to keep going. It didn't do it for me, and this movie didn't do it for me either. This was just very very dark. A lot of people were really happy that this title came out. A lot of people were big big fans of this movie. It's like a military werewolf movie, and I, I just didn't it wasn't my cup of uh, vinegar. Okay, that's that's what I gotta say about that. I don't like tea. Um. The stuff. Whoo! Whoo! Okay. Awesome. Horror comedy type movie. This is this is an awesome movie. I'm just gonna quickly go through it. The stuff. Okay, it's a movie about stuff. It's it's just like this uh yogurt that come that's coming to life. It's like you uh, they found it in the ground. No big secret, because that's right at the beginning of the movie. They found it in the ground, and they bottled it up. People are eating it, but the people are becoming like possessed. Because this stuff is is like from another planet. It's it's this is a really really fun movie. You want to see a fun horror comedy movie? The stuff. Okay, I, I, this is a definite pickup. And uh, this is Arrow Video. They give you a ton of bonus features on this thing, 
and I have watched every single one because I absolutely love this movie. This is another one of those like Silver Bullet I will go to if I do not know what to watch and I want to watch something a little bit lighthearted. The stuff is is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome movie. All right. This is in my horror section, but I do not consider this horror. This is more of a sci-fi. This is kind of funny, the story behind this. And this is called Elim okay, Exterminators of the Year 3000. Exterminators of the Year 3000. Now, why this this movie is fun. It's fun. It they used okay, so it's it's got this Mad Max feel about it. Uh apocalyptic, end of the world, people are trying to get to a certain point, whatever. Terrible, terrible acting, and the lead um character, the lead villain, doesn't even speak English, so they did a voiceover dub. And the voiceover, I guess they didn't know what to say have this guy say. So throughout the whole movie, all he yells at people is like, you mother grabbers, you mother grabbers. <laughs> He's like, get that mother grabber. You know, it, I, I, if, I, if I can find like a snippet of it, I'll put it in the video so you can see. Get that mother grabber. It, Once it says, more into the breach, you mother grabbers. Let's provide that water. He says it over. I don't know how many times he says it in this movie. But when I was a kid, I, my father rented this one because the title, the cover looked great. You know, the cover looked, cover looked great. Um, but it is a low budget. I, I literally, I feel like the, the crew probably went out into the, into the, um, desert with the clothes they probably wore the day that they showed up and as, as they started progressing, the clothes started falling apart. I, it, it's, it's fun. I enjoyed it. It's fun. I watch it a lot. The, the overdub thing, the guy's hilarious. Um, next movie, Repo, Repo, the genetic opera. This should be up there with Rocky Hour Picture Show. Uh, Repo, awesome movie. This is just an awesome music. It's a musical starring. Uh, it's got Bill Mosley in it. It's got uh, Paris Hilton in it. Um, okay, it's got everybody on the front. Uh, Alexa Vega, uh, Anthony Stewart. Let me see. Bill Mosley, Paul Sorvino. This is a great musical horror movie it's about this guy that repossesses your body like, like you get a set of eyes okay and you don't pay for your eyes they come back and repossess your eyes set to music yeah you can't ask for anything better than that. this is probably one of my this is my second favorite musical next to rocky hour picture show as far as horror musicals go awesome awesome movie a lot of bonus content I had this one on dvd upgraded to blu-ray because i like it that much this is just a great great horror musical movie if you're not seen repo the genetic musical genetic am i saying that right genetic the, the genetic opera okay if you have not seen this you gotta see it it's a, it's a must see in your life before you drop dead watch it all right john carpenter's body parts love this this is a creep show feel uh um tales from the crypt type thing uh i think it's three pop movie thing there where hosted by john carpenter as his ghoulish uh, mortician, mortician, what? Yeah, mortician. Yeah, he's a mortician. The guy that takes care of the the dead people in in the funeral home. Anyway, um, he and he's telling these three stories about how these people died. You know, so he's he's opening up uh coffins or he's opening up uh the slabs and he's unzipping you on your body bags. That that makes more sense. Body bags. He's unzipping the body bags and he's explaining to people how these people died and then it goes into the story. This is really good. Really, really good. Uh, fun movie, not too scary, kind of like a creep show, kind of like a uh, Tales from the Crypt. It's got the same kind of feel, same kind of thing, and John Carpenter did a great job of his little turn on this, this type of franchise. So, body bags, that's that's definitely a pickup. Session 9. Session 9 is a newer movie that I picked up, okay? Uh, I know it's been out for a little while. I did not know what this was. I started doing some YouTube searches on it. They kept showing this certain part with the guy from CSI. Am I going to have his name on the back? Or am I going to not say his name properly? David uh, Caruso. Sorry, David Caruso. Um, this group of people going into uh, fix up this old building. A lot of asbestos in the building. So uh, what they see and they see it, are they hallucinating? What's going on? Can't really tell. But each person is being affected in a certain way. People are disappearing. It's all set in this old... Um, building and it, it's it's really really good this was a really really good one session nine the original fire starter starring drew barrymore another great movie a movie about telekinesis okay uh don't get her upset with you because the father's got the telekinesis he can make you do things if you get the little girl upset with you she shoots giant fireballs on you or she sets you on fire fire starter starting thus the name fire starter starring drew barrymore this is an old classic 
And that's exactly what it is. The, the little girl has the power to uh, uh, not accumulate, uh, produce fire out of nothing. And if she gets mad at you, watch out. Great movie. All right. The Lawnmower Man, another great movie I enjoyed. This, this was like the beginning of... Uh, um, virtual reality and stuff, you know, and then this guy creating this virtual reality thing, but unfortunately, the, the, the character of Job, which is the, his lawnmower guy, uh, he gets him because he's, he's a little soft, he's got things going on with him or whatever, they can't tell what exactly is wrong with him, but the, 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 the whole virtual reality thing is supposed to, like, make this guy so that he it makes you into a better type person and 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 heals you of this and, and it ends up making him into this monster that's pretty much what it's about but great great movie the lawnmower man brain damage brain damage if i slide this out to have the cool yeah okay brain damage there's a little thing coming out of this guy's neck i watched this once this is a arrow release so look at all of those bonus features that's the biggest reason why I bought it, plus it was an hour release, plus it was a horror movie, plus it was probably cheap. I don't remember. Um, comes with the slipcover. Excited about that. I gotta put this in plastic because it shouldn't be like this. Um, what do I know about this? This guy has a thing growing out of his neck. It's like a, another alien type person is telling him, telling him to kill and stuff. That's 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 it's it's one of those funny type power movies i i have very little memory of it so it was probably not the greatest movie in the world but the fact that arrow video gave it this big big release and this with this ton of extra stuff had to be there has to be fans out there like big huge fans that love the movie brain damage if you've seen the movie brain damage if you're a fan of brain damage comment tell me tell me what i'm missing you know because i was thought it was okay but i i am not putting in brain damage on a saturday night for no apparent reason whatever all right Suspiria. This is the Synapsis Films release of Suspiria. And this is a Dario Argento's Suspiria. And Dario Argento, I think, did my Phenomenon. Phenomenon? I can never say the name word. Love that movie. It was original Creepers or The Creepers. So everybody was talking about this Suspiria. You got to get Suspiria. The price of this thing was going up. It was going crazy. So I'm like, what's Suspiria? What's this all about? What's the big deal? And, and supposedly the, the way it's shot... It's beautiful, the red's popping, the, the, the color's popping, but it's about this ballet school and people are dying. Um, I watched it. I watched it kind of in fast forward, okay, because I lost... In, now, it's, it's, this is an art film. This is an art horror film. If you are an art major or a film major, you're going to love this movie. You're going to love the way that he was shot. You're going to love the colors. You're going to love the what, what he did as far as the kills and, and how the blood is dispersed. I mean, it's not... This isn't like a graphic horror movie. This is like a classy. This is an art piece, my friends. This is this is this is an art film. And if you are not an artist, you might not understand all of this. You know, and that's me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not an art major. Uh, I I'm a big film fan, and I can I can totally respect and understand the way this thing was shot and the and the the beauty of it. And this, this is just a beautiful thing to watch. Did it scare me? Absolutely not. Did I jump? Absolutely not. Did, did this, is this something I'm going to throw in every single day? Absolutely not. But it was a beautiful piece of art. Suspiria. That's all I got to say. Beautiful piece of art. All right. Hatchet. All right. What I got to say about Hatchet. It's one of them. It's a slasher movie. It's a newer slasher movie. They tried to bring back the slasher, the Jason Voorhees, the Friday 13th, uh, the, the Nightmare on Elm Street. They tried to find a new slasher. And I believe Kane Hodder, uh, who was uh, probably one of the best Jason Voorhees, uh, plays, uh, what's his name? Let me make sure I get his name right. because they, uh, Victor Crawley. Victor Crawley is the killer in this movie. And these are actually fun. These are fun newer horror movies now let's let's just get this straight here hatchet hatchet two hatchet three and victor crawley these are all hatchet movies all starring um wow all starring i just said kane harder okay as as uh the victor crawley character um it's it's a slash movie. It's a it's, this is a no brainer. Teens doing what they're not supposed to be doing. They're drinking and smoking. They're having sex, and it's time for you to die. 
run and die. That's what's going to happen in these movies. You're going to run and you're going to die. So that's all I can say about that. They, they have, they're fun, newer slasher movies. If, you wanna, if you're looking for a, a Jason Voorhees, you're looking for a Michael Myers, you're looking for a new version of that, go to Victor Crowley, go to Hatchets. They're fun. Fun movies. That's why I bought the entire franchise. All right. Then we have Creep Show. Oh, yes. What was it? Where'd that come from? When you, when you, sometimes when, when you're holding a perfect movie, I mean, the original Creep Show was beautiful. This, this was, when I was a kid, this was another one that was on HBO all the time. I love this movie. This is, this is a great, great movie that, that set up in little steps there, little stories and hosted by your friend, you know, the, the, it's got, it's got like a whole thing going on here. And this this was a Scream Factory release. Was dying to get this. I pre-ordered this thing. Could not wait for it to come in. And it is it is just a great bunch of... Cla the, there's a magazine. Uh, a creep show magazine. The kid's not supposed to have the magazine. The father flips out. Takes that magazine. Throws it in the trash. The magazine flips open. And then the stories begin. What a great concept. What great storytelling. It has so much going on in this movie. And I absolutely love it. And... Uh, I'll tell you right now, Scream Factory did a great job with all the special effects and all the great things that they put into this thing. It also comes with a poster, a booklet, all kinds of stuff if you get the special box of thing. And I had to have it because I love Creep Show. What a great movie. And then Arrow Video released Creep Show 2. Another great movie, great franchise movie. Oh my good. I, I thought that Creep Show 1 was great. Then Creep Show 2 came out and the stories kept going and they stepped flowing. It was really good. Thanks for the ride, lady. You know what I mean? It's like. She should have picked up that guy. She hit him with the car. Thanks for the ride. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Um, great storytelling. Great movie. Uh, this one, uh, Creep Show 1, Creep Show 2. These are classics. Classics, classics, classics. If you're a horror fan, you have to have seen this already. You had to have seen them. But then, if you're a true horror fan, you picked up this pile of garbage. Creep Show 3. I don't even know what to say about this. I can't even remember this. I put this movie in. And they only released it on DVD. That's why I got the DVD. The other notes, the other ones are Blu-rays. And why did you why did you get the Blu-rays? And you get because I don't even think they released this on on Blu-ray. This, this was like a direct to DVD title. Didn't even make a Blu-ray. I don't think. I, if if it did, it's probably a an import of some sort. This was forgettable garbage. That, that's what I gotta say. I mean, I'm sorry, Creep Show. I love you to death. I love the shows to death. What happened here? That that's comment below if you have watched all the Creep Show franchise and then you you've watched this Creep Show three and look at the cover, man. It, it it should sell you on the cover. You got a, you got like a uh, a fortune teller on the cover there. It's reading cards and and if I was to write this and just by going on the cover, I would have been a fortune teller flipping the cards as they flip the cards. She tells the stories. Just like the original Creep Show, they different, you know, the, the the stories get told, but you know, there's no, there's no the magazine's not going on. It, it, it's it's oh, weird. Ugh. I I don't even want to consider this a a, a Creep Show movie. I, I'm 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 sad for them. Yeah. Uh, and then they released, and this one almost flew under the radar. Uh, Shutter original series Creep Show. The this is season one. I loved this. I loved it. I put it in. It was great. It, it's like. A long, expanded, two days worth of creep show, little movie show, TV show. Wow. Little creep show stories. Yes, yes, that's what it is. Yes, yes. Um, great franchise. Great uh, season. I'm looking forward to season two. This was really, really good. I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I watched it with the family, and they were like, this, this. some of the stories are, you know, it's, it's a hit or miss. You know what I mean? You're either going to get a lot of good stories, or you're going to get every once in a while you get one. Well, like the Twilight Zone, the movie, there's the, the military one there where he's like, uh, he's like in the military, and, and it gets really dark and everything. But then the rest of the story is like really, really good. You always get like one that's not the best one. You know what I mean? It's like there's one that's just kind of, you kind of wish that that one wasn't even there. That's how that was. You know, a lot, a lot of good stuff, though. All right, um, we summon the darkness. I'm not going to talk too much about this movie. This was a director DVD, stars Johnny Knoxville from Jackass. Um, this was good. This was probably one of my number one picks for new releases uh, in a long time. This this one came out, director DVD. I had to pick it up because I heard a couple of good things about it. 
I'm not going to say anything about it because I don't want to give anything away. If you want to see We Summon the Darkness, I believe it's streaming on one of the, the uh, either Hulu or Netflix right now. You got to see it. You got to see it. It's got a twist and a half. Love the twist. Love the story. Wow. Okay. This was good. This was a good, good movie. You never heard of it before? Look it up. Find it. Watch it. You're going to enjoy it. It was, it was good. It was, it was, I'm not saying nothing. Nothing. Not saying nothing. All right. Oh, Sam. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. This is another one of those stories within a story within a story type, type situation. Um, I'm a fan of the Sam character. I'm a fan of this movie. Uh, there is a couple of points in it that that drag a little bit, and I was kind of like, eh, you know, like I said, they, they're not going to be all hits, you know what I mean? But there are a lot of good ones in here, a lot of stories in here that, that keep you going, you know what I mean? Uh, but that's what this is. It's like like little little short stories all together, and but then they revolve around the Sam character, Trick or Treat, and he's like the main dude or whatever. Good movie, Trick or Treat. All right, let me move these around here for a second here so I don't drop anything or knock anything down as we get done with the last pile here. Yep, see here, here, it's going to fall. Everything's going to fall. All right, put that over there. Okay, here we go. Last pile for Horror Collection Shelf 3, Part 1. This is Deranged in Motel Hell. Love Motel Hell. Deranged is about... Probably about an hour and a half. Um, does it say what the story... The, the, the range is actually based on the story of... I want to say Ed Gaines. Let's say Ed Gaines. Inspired, terrifying. Uh, this inspired the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Silence of the Lambs. This is grotesque. Da, 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 da. Um, I want to say Ed Gaines. I want to say Ed Gaines, the guy from uh, Wisconsin that was killing people and skinning them and making curtains out of them and stuff like that. And lampshades um but this was the only way at the time to get motel hell so the only way to get motel hell was in this two pack so this is why i bought this i bought this specifically for motel hell love motel hell if you're not see motel hell it's about a motel that uh this guy is actually killing people so that he can make them into like beef jerky great movie great concept i watch it so many times i watched it enough so i could go out and buy the Blu-ray from Scream Factory with a whole bunch of bonus features. Motel Hell. Love this movie. Another one of those go-to movies. And then they released the Steelbook. Motel Hell on Steelbook. Once again, I, I even opened this one up because this one had a little bit more bonus features than the other one. I had to see the bonus features. Motel Hell is a must for people. This was one of those that I remember watching when I was a kid. Did not know the name, did not know what was going on. I only knew the concept. I only knew the the whole, like the storyline. So as I got older, I kind of, and Google was a thing. I started Googling things and started typing in different things that I remembered from the movie. And then the title came up and I went out and bought it. And I was like, yeah, that's it. That's it. I love it. And I want to watch it. And I want to get as many copies of it that I possibly can. It's one of my favorites. Motel Hell. Yes. Great, great movie. Then... Christine, yes, Killer Cobb. Christine is brilliant. This is a brilliant Stephen King movie. I absolutely love it. I love the the Audie character of the geek that turns into the cool guy because he's got the cool card. He gets the gets the dream girl, and his friend's a football star. He wants the dream girl, but he ain't getting the dream girl because he's got the dream car. But unfortunately, his dream car is in love with him, and he wants to kill everybody around him. What a great movie! This is a great, great Stephen King movie. This was a great, great movie in general. I mean, I, I don't read, so I don't know if the book was something like, woo, the book was a great, and the movie's not so great. A lot of people are like, oh, the, the book was so much better. And listen, I can't watch a book. You can put the book on the table. I can stare at the book for about 20 minutes an hour. It's not going to be as good as this. I promise you. I promise you, if I if I, you put that book on the table and I stare at that book, I am not going to be as in, engulfed in, in, in my life as I was watching this movie. So you book lovers, you read away, but... Movie love is like me. I'm going to watch the movie and I'm going to tell you what I think. This was great. This is a steel book. This is the first time I got this format besides the DVD. So this was an upgrade to Blu-ray. But then they released 
the 4K. And because this is one of my favorite horror movies, and I told you all, I do not like to upgrade the 4K. I, I, I like to cut it off at Blu-ray. But this does have the Blu-ray in it and the 4K, and I like the cover. And it was not that expensive. And it does have more bonus features in it. And I wanted to see a horror movie in 4K. So I figured this was a good horror movie to see if I am right or wrong or whatever as far as 4Ks go. I just find 4Ks to be very dark. Uh, I mean, they, they clean them up. It looks beautiful and everything. But I think it looks too beautiful. I like my... You know, when I watch a movie like this, I want to bring myself back to the t first time I watched it. You know, to have that nostalgic feel. And nostalgic feel would probably be the DVD or the VHS. Because you got that bumps and pops and little lines and everything. And you get the full feel like you saw it for the first time either in the drive-in or you saw it the first time in the movie theater. And then... Blu-ray cleans it up, and they do a great job. And then 4K is supposed to be doing that much better, but I don't really think so. I, I really prefer my Blu-rays over 4Ks. The prices of these things are crazy. I don't know what I paid for this. It probably wasn't that much. That's why I bought it. But um, that's what I got to say about that. Yeah, the Blu-rays are uh, good enough, but I, I upgraded. This is probably one of my few uh, 4K uh, horror movies that I own because I just really love the movie Christine and I wanted to see what the car looked like in 4K. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see that classic car with the red and, and everything popping in 4K. I just wanted to see if it, if it if it made a difference. Awesome movie. All right, then the I got to put a new cover on this thing, but because it's the I cut it and then the paper, the plastic. But this is the poltergeist. The poltergeist. This is poltergeist. The original poltergeist. Yes, Carol Ann. They're, they're here. Yes, yes. The, the little girl that creeped the crap all her audio yeah she's the girl's sitting up all night parents don't even pay attention what's going on with this kid because she's traipsing around the house and she's watching snow on the tv and the tv's talking to her and then eventually the tv sucks her in and the parents gotta figure out how to explain that one okay yeah my, my daughter got sucked into the tv yeah sure she did yeah okay and we'll see you in 10 to 20 listen this this was a great great horror movie i absolutely loved the original poltergeist and then Came Poltergeist 2. Once again, loved it. Good story. Takes off where they left off. The Once the kid gets sucked into the TV, they don't want nothing to do with electronics no more. So now they moved into like a hotel room and they got no electronics there. And they're trying to... They, they befriend this Indian who's supposed to do some kind of Indian stuff that he does to make the, the ghosts go away and everything. And guess what? They're back. Yes, the, 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 the old man is showing up at the house again. He's like, you're going to die in there. He always creeped me out. He's like, walk up. There. God is in his holy temple. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's it. I'll tell you right now, old man, God is in his holy temple. <laughs> I mean... Freaky. And he wants to come in your house and say, how you doing in there? Let me in. And he's, he's flipping out on these people. And the little girl's like, no, mommy, mommy. Hey, listen, in general, if, if it wasn't the guy that sucked me into the TV in part one, I still wouldn't let this old man in. I don't know what he's doing on my property. As soon as he walked up the, the walkway, somebody should have pulled out a gun and shot him in the head. I don't understand why they let this guy on the property. I don't know why they let him knock on the door. It's raining out. He's walking around. He's yelling at you. He's like, God is in his holy temple. He's like, you're all going to die in there. Listen, kill him. He's on your property. Open up the door. T tell him to come in the house. T come on in. Come on in. Now he's officially on your property. He's guts to go. You know, that, that's what I got to say. You go. You call somebody. 911, old man's yelling at me. I'm going to die. He's singing God is in his holy temple songs to me. He's, he's trying to take my little girl. He lives in the TV. Kill him. Oh, okay. Yeah, the guy creeps me out on this one. This this one this one was was really good. Was it better than part one? No. But it does hold up. Really good. Hold up a time too. Great story. Then we have Poltergeist 3. This one is all set in a hotel. It's a gigantic hotel. And once again, he's still hunting down Carol Ann. The old man there is still hunting down Kane. His name's Kane. And he's still creepy as he can be. And he's outside washing windows in a hotel now. He's like, let me in. Yeah. Listen, guy's outside, it's like 11 o'clock at night, it's dark outside, he's outside, he's washing your windows. You don't let that guy in. I mean, this is a dangerous thing to begin with. Why is he there? Why? No. But this, this tell you right now, this is another one, the Poltergeist franchise keeps going, because I really enjoyed this movie also. I thought I thought this was great. Um, I want to say Tom Skerritt is the, the father in this. Tom, am I, am I saying? Yeah, yeah, I got it. A uh, guy from Top Gun and from uh, Poison Ivy. 
Another good one, Carol Ann. Unfortunately, Carol Ann's last movie, The Little Girl Passed Away from some kind of sickness. I don't know if she had some kind of stomach cancer. So, something was going on with her. Um, but this was her last Poltergeist film. Really, really good. Unbelievable. Great, great movie. All of them were good that she was in. And then this one came out. And I put this in the other day. This is a Poltergeist remake. And I put it in and I took it out. I put it in and I took it out. I, I, I put it in. I watched it for maybe about 45 minutes to an hour. And I was like, why? I, you know, originally when I watched it, I watched it in, in my, my theater. And I was like, this is not, not that bad. This wasn't a bad remake. You know, okay, it's all right. But as I watched it closer... I realized the acting was kind of, oh, you know, and, and the stupidity of the characters was, and I understand, okay, this is a remake, but they remade it, it uh, the tree, okay, the tree in part one was a tree, a real, the original Poltergeist had this creepy, scary tree outside that was scaring the, the bejesus out of this kid, so they tried to really bulk up the tree part in this movie, wow. A CGI pile of garbage is what I got to say. But I, like I said, I watched it the first time. I was like, oh, it's not bad. You know, I watched it the second time. Uh, I, I I don't know if it's because I was more up close. Maybe I was more awake. Maybe there's more going on. But I was like, I can't love this movie the way I love the other Poltergeist movies. I just can't. I just don't think they did did it justice. I don't think they did. The, they, they, the funny thing is, see the clown on the cover? They really pushed the clown because the clown was really creepy in the original Poltergeist. So they added more clowns in this one. So now it's not just one clown. The other one was just a, a the other first Poltergeist was just a, a lonely clown sitting on the chair that eventually comes to life with these long arms, wraps around the kid and everything. But they tried to mock it on the clown, you know. And I, I, I in my head, I, this is what went on, went on in my head. They're gonna they're trying to make an Annabelle. They're trying to make a Chucky. They're trying to make something that they can commercialize and sell as a figure. You know what I mean? And the clown is the the way to go. Now the original clown was beautiful. This new clown. It's not just a new clown. It's a new clowns. They they they, they don't give you one clown because that was a scary enough. We're gonna give you a bunch of clowns that are gonna come to. Oh man, I don't know what to say. If you love this movie, I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't I don't mean to judge. I just tell you how I feel, and I I, I couldn't love the new Poltergeist. I don't know why. And then we got They Live. Great movie. I've already reviewed this one over and over again. This is a sums up the world movie. Okay, it's all about uh, commercializing and and. It, there's aliens amongst us, and I, I truly believe that there may be very well aliens amongst us, especially political ones and whatever, people running the world that are just not... To me, this, you got to look outside the box with this movie. I don't want to get too much into it. If you if you want to see my review on They Live, it's somewhere down there. You know, look, look for it down there. Yeah. Uh, so we got They Live on Blu-ray, and They Live on 4K. Once again... This one's still sealed, though. Okay, so so you right away you're like, well, you just said that you don't buy many 4Ks. Well, They Live is another one of my favorite type sci-fi type horror movies. And I like the fact that it comes... If it doesn't... Okay, now, if a 4K does not come with the Blu-ray, I don't buy it. I won't buy it because this is an upgrade, and I want to... This is going to knock out of the plate, knock out of the place. This is going to knock the other Blu-ray out of its place on my shelf. If it does not have the Blu-ray... I do not buy it. Why, you say? Why would you not just buy the 4K if you want to see the 4K? Because I don't have a 4K player in every single room of my house. I don't have a, I have one 4K player in this house, and it is for the family to watch. And I am not... Well, I'm not, I am not. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. I do not spend enough time in the main room watching movies. My Usually my wife's in there. My kids were in there. My daughter's watching Bob's Burgers one after the other after the other. I am not going to get a slot to watch a movie. So it's very rare for me to be able to even watch a 4K movie. So... That's the reason why I don't buy a lot of... Another reason why I don't buy a lot of 4K movies. But if it has the Blu-ray with it, I can watch it anywhere. And that's why I bought it. So, They Live 4K. And another reason why I bought this one, this is, is this is the biggest reason. Here we go. Ready? It came from Scream Factory and it had an uh, a limited edition exclusive figure of... Are they going to say the guy's name on the back of this? I'm not going to be able to say the name of the guy. But it's, it's Roddy Piper's partner. Okay, the other guy that he tries to get the glasses on, the ball guy. Um, and I needed the figure, so that's why I ordered this. And that's probably why I never opened it. But there was no other way to get the figure, my friends. Uh, Scream Factory did also do a great job adding extra bonus features onto this release. Whew. Okay, let's breathe. Because I'm getting down to my the nitty-gritty here, the last pile. But there's also a lot of randomness going on over here. All right. 
Let me see if I can get these in some kind of order so you understand. So these are probably not going to be in order as when they... These might be in the order as the way they came out, but not the order in the way I should be watching them. But we have the Criterion Collection of Silence of the Lambs. Hannibal Lecter, who doesn't love Silence of the Lambs? This is a thriller, horror. Uh, it, it's edge of his, edgy as seat. And Anthony Hopkins, best movie ever, okay? If, if you don't count, like, uh, The Elephant Man or whatever. Anthony Hopkins rocks in this. I love the Hannibal Lecter, ca Hannibal Lecter character. He is just so psychologically correct. You know what I mean? Like this guy gets in your head and I love that. I love the manipulation and and, and the the dialogue between him and Clarice and, and and this is a great, great psychological thriller. That's the word I'm looking for. Psychological thriller. But he's not he's not even the to, he's not even the villain in this movie. You know he's he's like the helper, you know what I mean? And, but he's the villain. You know what I mean? But what a great, great movie. Love Silence of the Lambs. And then I bought this Hannibal Lecter collection, which has Manhunter, Silence of the Lambs, and Hannibal. Honestly, my friends, Silence of the Lambs is the only movie that I actually remember. Honest with, with you, Silence of the Lambs was a great, great movie, an absolute masterpiece. The other movies I got to relive. I got to go back and watch the prequels and the sequels so I can I can understand what exactly they were trying to do but the first one was the best silence of the lambs was the best i mean it was just just it was and i know you're gonna say manhunter and the other one came out first what it didn't have um it didn't have anthony hopkins so it wasn't to me it wasn't the, the the thing you know what i mean and then we had red dragon which wasn't part of this this set over here i gotta watch it again can't can't tell you anything red dragon another silence of the lambs hannibal Lecter story and then hannibal rising Another one is, I think it's the prequel of how Hannibal became Hannibal. Don't remember it either. Don't remember it. It wasn't worthwhile for me to get it on. Like I said, this one, if it wasn't worthwhile for me to upgrade and I have the other ones on Blu-ray, then there's got to be a problem. I got I got to go back and watch them. Maybe I love them. Maybe I'll hate them. Maybe I'll upgrade them. I don't know. But Hannibal Rising was the prequel. And then this one, I think, was uh, the sequel to, I don't know. It's part, it's part of the Hannibal Lecter series. All right. You ready for some randomness here? Here we go. Triloquist. You'll laugh. You'll die. Don't remember this movie also. Can't remember it. I bought it back in the day. It was Dimension Extreme Films. That's all I know about that. And it's about uh, a dummy. A dummy, uh ventriloquist dummy that comes to life killing people. Or something to do with that. That's that's why I bought it. I bought it for the title. This was not a cheap title and this was something i have not seen in years i might have watched this probably about 10 15 years ago and i cannot remember it so maybe i'll throw it back in maybe i'll give it a shot it might be worthwhile cover looks interesting triloquist okay this is a johnny depp heather graham from hell um don't remember this also don't remember this also don't remember this don't remember it. i i'm gonna have to watch i think it's a this is a two disc set Feels like, yeah, it is a two disc set. Okay, so this is a two disc DVD set. I like Heather Graham. I like Johnny Depp. Might be worth a watch. But then again, uh, what's the other Johnny Depp movie? Uh, Sleepy Hollow. Didn't really care for. Um, so maybe this is one of those. There's, there's certain horror movies that Johnny Depp does. Uh, there's one with a window. Is it a window one there? I think it's something to do with a window. Nah, it might be totally off. Anyway, um, I gotta go back and check this out. But From Hell, if it's something I should throw in right away, just tell me. All right. All right. This is The Legend of Lizzie Borden. My wife and me love some Lizzie Borden stories. Lizzie Borden was just, she was, she was just a question mark. She was, she was a, an enigma. Okay. You, you don't know if she was the killer. You don't know if she wasn't the killer. You don't know if it was the sister. You don't know what, you know, people don't know what happened that day. Nobody knows except she, she, the mother and father ended up dead, killed with an axe, and, and, that's the, that's the storyline before the, about that. But we don't know if it was a sister. We don't know if uh, uh, um, if it was, you know, Lizzie Borden's lover. You, you you don't know what the who you don't know who killed these people. But they're dead. They they got killed. That's a fact. But you don't know, okay? And I don't think we'll ever know. We'll probably never ever know who the killers were or if if Lizzie Borden actually did it. But this was the Elizabeth Montgomery. Um, am I saying that right? Did I say that right? Yes, Elizabeth Montgomery, Bewitched, um, Legend of Lizzie Borden. This was the one that I absolutely love. I really love this movie. 
And then uh, they released... Uh, stuck together. Yeah, wait, uh, um, Lizzie Borden with Christina Ricci. This is still factory sealed. I have not opened this up yet. I did watch this. This was a... I think it was like a made-for-TV movie, so I watched it on TV when it came out. It was okay. It was no Elizabeth Montgomery. The Elizabeth Montgomery one is just an old movie. It's like, I don't know if that's the 70s, 80s. I mean, I, I hate to say old when I say 80s or whatever, but... Uh, let me see. Does it have... Nope. No. You never get it right. I want to say 70s, late 70s, early 80s, maybe. I don't know. Um, this wasn't that. <laughs> that's all I gotta say about that. I got I gotta I gotta go back and watch it again. This was really cheap too. I got that one at Walmart. It's real real cheap. Then we have uh, the remake with Heather Graham because I like Heather Graham of uh, Flowers in the Attic. Now this also I prefer the original over this one. I do not own the original, which I'm gonna hop on that right after I get done with this video because I should have the original Flowers in the Attic in my collection because I really did enjoy that one and that one stars the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I believe. Um, if I'm correct about that. That was a good one. This one, I do not remember that well. I know that they released the whole, like, franchise. It was, it was like a, a two-week event where they would release this one. It was like Flowers in the Attic and then, uh, Petals in the Wind or something like that. And I ended up picking up that. I don't know if I picked up the other ones. I don't see them here. They might not be here. I might not have gotten them. But I got this one because, pretty much because it has Heather Graham in it. And I like the story of Flowers in the Attic. I think it's a great thing. Um, oh. Oh. Flowers in the Attic. If you don't know what Flowers in the Attic is about, uh, this family comes to move in with the, the the mother's mother. The mother's mother is like this psychopath. She wants to marry the daughter out. But unfortunately, the, the, the she doesn't want the children to be known. She doesn't want the, the suitors for the, the daughter to know that she has these children. So she pretty much locks them in the attic and feeds them very, very minimally. Until they finally snap and they go after the grandmother. Good movie. Um, the Bad Seed. This is an old movie. I, I was in this kick with Village of the Damned and these, these kids killer movies. I uh, So I, I wanted to see The Bad Seed. I heard if you like Village of the Damned, you're going to like The Bad Seed. I uh, put in uh, The Bad Seed. I actually really enjoyed it. This is an older movie. Um, it flows really, really well. This little demonic, uh, little girl, cute as a button, but she's a killer. You know what I mean? That type of thing. Uh, like, a, like a Damien, like, like a, the Omen, you know, type thing there. Uh, in Village of the Damned, those kids would, those kids were just so darn cute. You know, they all looked exactly the same. It was so it's funny. And they're making you stick your hands in boiling water. Love it. Love it. Um, so I had to get the bad seed. Um, I haven't seen it in a long time, though. I haven't seen it in a long time, so I don't want to give too much about it. I don't, I... I can't give a lot about it because I haven't seen it. So, so tell you a whole storyline about it. Demonic little girl. That's all I got to say about that. All right. This is my Children of the Corn franchise. Here we go. So we have Children of the Corn was released on Arrow Video. And it has a whole bunch of bonus stuff. This was actually... Where did I put it? Did I put it over there? Where did I put it? I put it over here. This was actually an upgrade to my Children of the Corn DVD. Um, this was an Anchor Bay release. Arrow video release and Arrow video, of course, gave you a ton, a ton of bonus features and extra stuff. And I mean, granted, look at the back of this thing. I mean, the, the DVD gave you a ton of bonus features and extra stuff. But I wanted to uh, get the Arrow video release because I do enjoy Children of Corn. The original first Children of Corn was very, very enjoyable. Storyline. Uh, these kids are talking to the the rose of corn and it's, there's some kind of demonic character in there and it's telling the kids that they have to go out and kill their parents because if you're over 18 you gotta die and they want to keep it all children and, and and so when you reach like a, a puberty stage they they like crucify you in a certain way and they they give you up to the corn as a sacrifice and great movie good story has um I was gonna say her name in the beginning of the thing there from um from from uh Terminator. Terminator girl. Terminator girl Linda Hamilton. Yes, Terminator Girl, Linda Hamilton. I think she married the guy from Titanic, uh, the guy that, that produced or wrote or directed Titanic. Uh wow, uh Cameron Cameron Russell uh, no Cam wow. Uh oh. 
at least one video I got to draw a blank on who this person is. Is it James Cameron? James Cameron, yes, the 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 guy that did wow. Woo! James Cameron. The guy that did Titanic. The guy that did Terminator. I think they met during Terminator. They fell in love. They ended up getting married. Linda Hamilton. Okay. Children of Corn, great movie. Stephen King adaptation movie type thing. And then I bought the remake on DVD. This is the uncut and uncensored. This was actually made for TV. Not as good as the original, of course, because it was made for TV. They, I don't know if they released a Blu-ray copy of this yet. Probably not, because it was a made for TV DVD. Uh, so they probably didn't format it or, or didn't use the proper cameras. They probably wouldn't make a difference if I, if I upgraded anyway. But that's why I bought this. Okay, and then this is Children of Corn 2 and 3. Okay, on DVD. And then I recorded, recorded, I recorded, I bought this set. Now, Children of Corn 2 is on here, not on here. That's why I hung on to this. There is no, as far as I know, Children of Corn 2 on Blu-ray as of yet. If there is, I will purchase it. I will find you and I will buy you because I need to complete my Children of Corn collection. Because then I bought this, which is another one of those four movies on one disc type setup. Uh, like I said, there's, it's questionable about the compression. I had some people comment and saying it does not affect anything. There's no compression problem with a Blu-ray because a Blu-ray has so much memory in it that you can fit the four movies on one disc and it will still be as perfect as it was if you were to put it on individual discs. I don't know. I have a hard time buying that theory. I have a hard time buying it because if that's the fact, if that's the truth, why is it that when they release these box sets, why isn't everything like... Why don't you put 10 movies on, on one disc? I mean, I, I don't know. I just, I want my movies, individual discs, bonus features on individual discs, individual cover art. I mean, the cover art for these things are beautiful. Why not put them on a separate cover? Why not have a, a uh, maybe a alternate cover, you know, with it, with like Screen Factory does, where they have a, they, they commission a new artist to do new covers for these things, and then they have it reversible, and then you have a new cover. I, I think that these are great movies. Uh, they all have the same concept. Demons, controlling kids, want to kill the parents. To break them all down for you, that, that's about it. So this one has Children of Corn 3, Children of Corn 4, The Gathering, Children of, of, of the Corn uh, 5, and Children of Corn 666, Isaac's Return. All crammed together on one disc and supposedly is no problem. And then we have Children of the Corn Revelations. Why did I buy this one and only have it on DVD? I don't know if this has... A Blu-ray release also. And I'm not even sure where this falls into the Children of the Corn franchise. Usually once I get to 666, I'm pretty much done. So I ended up buying this one. And this was actually a former rental. So there had to be a reason behind me buying that one. And then they released Children of the Corn Genesis. This was... this It does have a Blu-ray release. I have not bought it as of yet. This is actually the prequel to all of the whole things. This is the Genesis. This is where it came from. The Where it originated from. First book of the Bible. Beginning. This is the beginning. Um, don't remember it. I don't remember it. I got to go back and watch it. it. It was probably a low budget, made for TV type situation, direct the DVD, gave it the Children of Quan title. They always put the, uh, based on, yep, yep, based on the story, Children of Quan by Stephen King. There only had to be one Children of Quan. There only had to be one Children of Quan Stephen King movie, Children of Quan, and that would have been fine with everybody probably in the world. And then the rest of the franchise is just additions, and they, they just keep almost like I feel like it's like silly putty or uh, play-doh and you're just kind of pulling you're pulling on that putty until it breaks so so you got this awesome piece of something and then eventually you're gonna mess up the franchise you're gonna mess it up because you're just gonna add too much and you gotta pull and pull and pull till something breaks and it just kind of ruins it and this might have been this might have been the killer uh then we have tales of Halloween this was another one of those split up into little stories. These are fun. This was a fun, funny. Some are funny, some are scary, some are creepy. But this box set thing had a ton of extra stuff going on. And I was I was happy to get it. I believe it's out of print as of now. But this has a Blu-ray, the DVD, bonus feature disc, and the soundtrack CD. Very rarely you ever get a collection with the soundtrack CD. So if I love the music that much, I can actually plop in a CD and listen to the music from the movie. That is a great concept. That's what 
That's what Scream Factory should do. You should throw the soundtracks in there because sometimes people want to hear the soundtrack. This was put together so well, the, the set, the box set and everything, and then the stories. Some of them, like I said, are real, real stinkers. Some of them are really, really good. Some are really, really funny. Some are really, really scary. Great storytelling, and it has a lot. There's a. This isn't like a creep show where you only get three, or a Twilight Zone you only get three. You know, this 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 gives you plenty. This is almost like a series, like like a, a franchise in its own self box set. And they give you a ton. And the bonus features on this thing, are unbelievable. Also, they give you a ton of bonus features in it, so you don't only get the blue. I mean, we're talking Blu-ray, DVD, bonus feature disc, and a soundtrack. But you get the bonus features. You get a bunch of stuff. On top of the bonus features that you would have already gotten in, in the regular disc itself. Alright, we're down to the last two. And we're going to put these both together. This is my Donnie Daco Arrow video release. With so many special features. They easily probably could have printed out another cover. And printed out more special features on the next cover. Because this movie... They, they, this, they gave this movie such a treatment. This is another one of those pieces of art. I have watched Donnie Daco probably about three times in my life. And every t it's, this has the theatrical cut, the director's cut, and just a Donnie Daco bonus disc or whatever, and book, and it's got, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. This is a watch. I mean, you have to really emerge yourself into this film to understand what you are watching and there is a lot of stuff to watch a lot of stuff to see and i'll tell you right now every time i watch this i watch it three times if i remember correctly i want i don't want to steer you wrong but i believe i've watched it three times already and every time i watch it i see something new it's it's strange it's a strange movie all right so with that said uh and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sum it up if you have not seen donnie daco it's one of those movies i want you to watch it I want you to comment below what you thought, what you saw. Explain to me what you saw because I can't, it's almost unexplainable. Okay, what Donnie Daco, the premise, the story, it's it's good, but it's good in a wild, crazy ride thinker way. This is a think piece. Okay, and it's gonna make you think when you get to the end of it. So I gotta say, box set beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I hate to end it off with this, but then there's S Daco. Never opened it. Don't care. Donnie Darko is the way to go. And that is the last of my horror movies. Shelf 3, Pot 1. If you like what you see, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell. Because coming soon will be... Let me see. I'm going to look over there and see if I can get the rest of this shelf. So it will be the horror movie Shelf 3... Part 2, and we have Reanimator, Brighter Reanimator, Microwave Massacre, Cat People, all the Paranormal Activity franchise, um, Hostel, Cabin Fever, Jaws franchise, uh, The Hills Have Eyes franchise, The Fog, uh, Candyman franchise, and a bunch of Stephen King stuff, and a bunch of randomness. So, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, and I will see you later.